it was bad enough in a world of of companies incentivized to just pump out content because that was the only lever they had to pull to sort of increase advertising. At least there was a human somewhere behind the scenes that was ultimately accountable for it. In the long run, it's not clear. There's no reason why it won't just all be, be AI. We're not going to be absolutely flooded with AI content all over the internet. And it's interesting because it's both a opportunity and a risk for Google. The risk is obvious. Google ultimately gets its content from the web. And if the mm-hmm. web is absolute garbage, then Google is garbage. And that's that's the real issue with Google over the last five to 10 years. There's just so much more garbage on the web that the Google results get worse and worse. And this, is, you know, people will criticize Google that, wow, they, they, they're bad at their jobs. I think there's a real aspect of like, they know how important it is to have good search results. It's That's how hard of a problem it is. That's how much garbage there is out there Right. On the other hand, if there's any company that can figure this out and can handle it, it will be Google, right? Like, like go to Bing, go to like any other sort of search engine It's way worse because it's such a hard problem. And so maybe this differentiates them even more. That's sort of the optimistic take, but there's, you know, in the long run, how much value is the web going to be? Like, uh, that's the question in particular. Like even if Google improves its processes on the back end, we also got this question from Patrick from Chicago, and he says, after the recent sudden closure of the website Jezebel, I wanted to ask your opinions on the enshittification of the internet. As a pop culture fan, I used to frequent a lot of the geo media websites, which is Gawk or something websites, but my favorite of the bunch was the AV Club. Maybe it's not Gawker. AV Club wasn't Gawker. In any event, he says, I was a diehard, refreshing, multiple times a day reader, but now I no longer read the site. The drop in a quality experience seemed to happen slowly and then quickly. More ads and more aggressive video ads started clogging up the mobile experience to the point where it would often crash. And incrementally, quality talent left until suddenly they shuttered the Chicago office and laid off the remaining local staff. So this seemed to follow the trend of the enshittification of the internet. Squeeze more dollars out of site traffic by flooding the site with ads, reduce overhead by laying off more tenured, likely more expensive writing talent. But in the end, they lose a loyal reader. With fellow geo media site Jezebel closing recently, I wondered, is this the inevitable end of every good website? Is this capitalism working correctly? Is this just a byproduct of it being really difficult to monetize writing on the internet? And for any any for anyone unfamiliar, the term in shitification describes, quote, the phenomenon of online platforms gradually degrading the quality of their services, often by promoting advertisements and sponsored content in order to increase profits. Uh, I hate the term in shitification because it describes something that's real and it it does provide a useful framework to analyze how and why the internet changes in frustrating ways but it also sounds like reddit terminology that is just like impossible to take seriously and so i I wish we could come up with a better word for the well i have i have have two objections to it uh as well okay objection number one is i feel like I wrote about this a long time ago, and why does this, you know, or maybe it's professional it's jealousy. It's all branding. In That's right. Yes, really it's, caught it's, on. it's only written like two years ago. I wrote why web pages suck in 2015. Like, like some of us have been on this for, ah. for sort of for sort of a long time. It's the same thing with like the Lena Khan's Amazon article, which I felt like was just articulating aggregation theory, but she gets all the press and the the, the pointies. <laughs> it's actually there all you you know, the, my real motivation of being against the FTC. Um, We've gotten but, to the bottom of it here in the therapy office. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. Number two, my issue with it, and sort of with Cory Doctorow's view of the internet in general, is he asc- he ascribes a degree of intentionality to these platforms that I don't that I think is misplaced. And, and okay. like you know, there's it's like there's really too much agency. Like these entities are doing this on purpose. And I don't think that's the case. I, I, you know, I think this is like the, it's a similar mindset to take the Lena Khan example of we allowed these companies to come to dominate the internet. Like it's like, it's placing too much agency when this is a situation where the structural factors are by far the dominant factor. And I don't think there's anything that could have been done about this. And it's what we talk about right now. When you achieve such massive scale, 
it's manageable, it's manageable, it's manageable until it's not, until it sort mm-hmm. of tips over. And I think that's the case here generally is you just get so many people, so much stuff online that say Twitter, for example, changes from a place of conversation to a place of war. And that it's a perfor- it's performance, right? The, the way to enjoy Twitter today is you go there with the intention of laughing, of like laughing at people, laughing at the absurdity. It, 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 like if you go there, Without that, then you're going to give in to anger, right? And like that's and, this is the way to the dark side, right? Do not go there with the intention to learn. Go there right. to laugh. You may learn something, but if you're looking to learn something, you're probably going to be led astray. It's I do a good think rule you can still. I do think you can still learn, but it's a it's a very specific can. type of learning where you can be a you, you like you see novel, but in all cases where you learn from is like accounts that no one's heard of and like tiny little things or like little corners of of of, of the internet that are weirdly represented there and that is why i i you know i i hope twitter doesn't go anywhere because it still only exists sort of in that space but Mm -hmm. just the economic the economics of zero marginal costs are undefeated and, and the fact that you're competing with infinite number of competitors you only have the one lever to pull means it is going to degrade and get worse and worse and worse the only way out is to recognize that and to take a degree of intentionality to change your business model around it. So in the long run, what are we going to trust online? Are we going to go back to printed newspapers? Of course not, right? We're not going backwards. I think that I've helped push us in one possible direction, which is put up a paywall. like that. Make money that way. Make $120 per subscriber instead of trying to make 1.2 cents per subscriber or whatever it is right. with, with sort of an ad-based model. With, with There's all sort of incentives that flow from that, the need to go big, the need to have clickbait, the need to sort of like go viral, the need to you know rank high, rank high in Google. I, to what extent can any ad-supported site stay viable in the very long run? That's a very fair question. It's not clear, you know, there's, there's platforms and entities that have held out that I, I, I like that are ad supported, like, you know, diverge, the Verge. right. Is, yeah. is kind of a go-to example in tech and, and, you know, anyone's complaints about the verge are generally about, Oh, they don't like a particular point of view or, or whatever they're taking to a problem or they're only negative or whatever. People might are be. glad the verge exists though. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Like, like, and, and so, it, but my point is that actually speaks to the fact that they've, they've resisted this. It hasn't gone sort of, sort of full scale, but you have to question in the long run, like how, if you look out 10 years, 15 years, how sustainable is that? How sort of meaningful can that be? And maybe there will be some small number of entities that do survive, but this is why I, I, making people pay, like that is going to be the island in the sea of garbage that is the internet. And, and what is that? That is placing a constraint. Constraints are essential for business. That's how you make money is, is you, you you pay to overcome some sort of challenge, some sort of thing that's in your way. If you don't have that, the the waves of this, I, I think, are just impossible to sort of push back on. And, you know, we've seen it. it. We've we've seen it we're, in my we're, lifetime. We're, we're living my it. lifetime, literally the last five years. I mean, like there just aren't good websites anymore. And I think you hit on it. The key insight is that a lot of the most frustrating transitions we've seen are not undertaken because the people in charge are especially evil or craven or irrational. This is just market forces at work where there are a handful of social media companies and Google who have figured out how to serve ads in a really compelling way and are making gobs and gobs of money uh, as a result. And then a lot of the digital media was serving ads the same way newspapers used to serve ads and it just doesn't really work well and you hit a point of diminishing returns and it becomes sort of a race to the bottom and then you look around and it's like the verge the ringer the new york times which is now a subscription business and not really an ad business there aren't many websites that you can go to that are ad supported that are actually like a fulfilling experience And so then you do enter this phase where, okay, so social media just sort of is a stand in for the internet for almost everybody. And there aren't really alternatives. And if social media is getting worse, I'm just walking through my thought process as I'm reading your article. If social media is going to become full of like deep fakes and nonsense that can't be verified, which we're sort of already there, it seems like it's going to get worse. Um, then it starts to feel like the whole internet is just crappier now than it used to be. 
and then you go di- like you you take a step further and maybe that's a good thing is is how i read the end of your article and maybe it could be healthy in the long run if we all develop a different relationship to our presence online and the way we consume information does that is, this, is that is, what, is this chapter 3 this is chapter 3 there you go chapter 3 let's see where do, where do i have it written down here the name um why the internet becoming increasingly incoherent may not be a bad thing. Uh, do you care to expound? 